Durham and Haiti also survived the second wave of violent attacks on black towns across America by angry whites that took place from 1918 through 1921 following the return of black soldiers from World War I who demanded jobs and racial equality. This period saw nearly 40 black communities nationwide destroyed at the hands of angry whites, including the Greenwood section of Tulsa, Oklahoma, known as the original Black Wall Street. Well, everything that you would need was there in the Greenwood neighborhood. Uh, so you didn't have to go downtown, and I think that was part of why the city of Tulsa let this happen, because they were not making the money they had anticipated making, both from Indians and black people and Mexicans, because both the Indians and the Mexicans and the blacks bought their clothes from Papa. They didn't have to go downtown. People in those days were looking forward to trading with each other, and they didn't, uh, even if it cost a few more pennies from the African American, uh, they still would pay the extra pennies because they felt like they were investing in themselves. When they burned up Tulsa, they took pains to dynamite the schools. So there was nothing but rubble at Dunbar School where I went. Those mobs didn't just burn up everything. They pillaged because the store was well stocked and other people's businesses were well stocked. And they pillaged the stores and took all good things out before they, you know, put the dynamite in the fire and to destroy the building. Everything was kept out of the papers, as you know. It was hush, hush, hush. And they said it would be bad for Tulsa if the news got out. So the Hearst papers just said, nobody write anything about this. We act like it never happened. So my dad and Archie Gregg went on a speaking tour. And they went to Washington, D.C. and Lynchburg and Petersburg and places like that that had big congregations of blacks. And they spoke and told what happened in Tulsa. And those churches didn't have money to send, but they had shoes and barrels of clothes, old clothes, and they could solicit, you know, some more. And, and they were really the ones who helped. There was so much that was wrong in Tulsa. They even, as you know, passed a law that even if you own property and you could get a few sticks to put together to build another house, uh, you weren't allowed. You could not rebuild on property that had been destroyed. The minute this thing happened, they called the NAACP in New York and Walter White hastened down there. And the, the beauty of that was those enemy people did not know what Walter White was, and he was able to gather a whole lot of information about how they had stockpiled ammunition and just waited for an incident to happen so they could destroy the uh, other part of town. It wasn't just spontaneous that they suddenly showed up with all this weaponry and mass destruction stuff. They had been saving that stuff from beforehand. 